four reasons why most wedding videographers fail four reasons why most wedding videographers fail so let's go point number one why most wedding videographers fail is because they act like employees not as business owners so what do i mean by this what i mean by this is you know employees people that like just clock in just to go work and clock out treat the business differently than somebody who really cares about the business you know because like as a business owner you have to care more than the employee i mean there's some cases where you know some employees care more than the business owners but um as a business owner you always have to care for your business you know so a lot of um a lot of wedding filmmakers they treat their business they act as if they act like you know they're an employee instead of acting like a business owner employees clock in and clock out but business owners they clocked in the day they started the business and they've never clocked out the only time business owner clocks out is when maybe they sell the business or they pass it over to their kids or whatever or when they die or something like that but as a business owner you never clock out of your business okay you never that's why same thing like as a landlord if you're a landlord and uh, you manage your house there's no such thing as like oh you know i'm clocking out only call me on these hours what if um there's a leak in the roof at four in the morning your tenants are gonna call you they're not gonna wait till like you know 12 p.m or 9 to 5 to call you and be like oh mr leroy landlord um the roof is leaking you know the sewer just backed up and we got shit in the house now the house smells like a bunch of pile of shit so you know they're not gonna wait till nine or five like they want to take care of that right now you know they want you to send somebody or you to come and fix it right now they're not gonna be like oh you know let's wait till he wakes up Wait, let's wait till he, you know, he slips in and takes it, takes his baby naps and drinks some coffee and reads his daily newspaper. They're not going to wait for none of that. You know, if something happens at your house, they want you there and they want you to fix it ASAP. Like they don't care if you slept or not. They don't care if you were driving all night from another state. They don't care. They just want you to come and fix the leak in the house. Anyway, so. As a business owner, you never clock out of your business. Okay, guys, this is one thing a lot of people don't learn. Like, you are always working because, like, you know, employees, they do, what, 40 hours a week or whatever. You know, as a business owner, you talk to clients around 7 p.m. You talk to clients, some clients, like, you know, they, got, they get out of work at, like, 9 p.m. and they want to talk to you then. Like, oh, hey. I'm trying to book your I'm trying to book a wedding and stuff like that blah blah but I'm a nurse and I'm you know I get out at 6 30 blah blah but I'll be home at 8 you know can we talk then and if you want to get the wedding especially like our ends like they got some good money you know hell yeah I'll talk to that nurse at freaking 12 a.m if she needs me to on our lunch break or whatever you know what I mean so um as a business owner you never clock out of your business but most wedding filmmakers and just most people in general who start businesses, they, they want to be clocking out and, uh, you know, acting like, oh, when I'm clocked out, then don't hit me. Don't hit me up. Like, that's your business. Like, you are liable for that thing. You know, you are the engine of that thing. You are the brain of that thing. It's your vision. It's your baby. You know what I mean? You got to take care of that, you know, so... Most people want to feel like, you know, they need to clock out or they act like an employee. Em employees clock out. Business owners never clock out. I mean, we always clocked in. You know, I'm always on the clock. You know, in my business, I'm always on the clock. Right now, coronavirus is going on. It's crazy, right? I'm always on the clock. I'm going to be making those calls. I'm, I'm, I'm always on the clock. I'm not going to be, you know, sitting on my butt on, on some, oh, yeah, let me get a stimulus over here. Like, I'm, I'm going to be on my clock, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to be on the clock. 
I'm never going to clock out until, you know, whatever. But that's what it is. Like, um, you need to think like that. Don't you be wanting to just clock out and get done or whatever. You know, most people think like employees, think like a business owner. You are never clocked out of your business. So number two, why uh, most wedding videographers fail is they own outdated equipment. Okay, so how do they fail when they own outdated uh, equipment? Like, you know, you can't be using in like we're in 2020, right? You can't be using a camera that came out in 1990. Okay. Oh, well, that's pushing it. But you can't be using like, let's say right now you can't be using, let's say, uh, um, a T3 or let's say, uh, a camcorder or one of those big camcorders from like maybe 20, 2010, like, you know, like now things are more advanced than then, like update your equipment. You know, just because the 5D Mark II was really good when it came out, when you bought it, that doesn't mean you're going to have that camera forever. Like, the 5D Mark IV came out now. Go cop the Mark IV. Stop. Leave the 5D Mark II. Now the Mark IV is cheap right now. I want to buy it too because when it first came out, I was like drooling. I'm like, oh, 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 oh Mark IV. Like, you know, I was waiting for that camera because that camera, you know, that revolutionized the, car the DSLR world. Anyway, so just like update your equipment. Just don't stay with the same, like the Sony A6000 came out and changed the game, right? And there's some people right now that still use that camera. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, st I still own one and I use it on some of my shoots. But, you know, now you got cameras like the uh, Canon, the full frame cameras that are now cheaper. You got the A7S II that's now cheaper because the 3 came out. You know, you, you got the Panasonic line over there, which I want to try out, but I don't own one yet but you know from watching some people use the uh gh5 and whatever i don't know the line gh7 i don't know the the panasonic line but i like the way the coloring looks when they do their thing but that just might be lots or whatever which you know is easy to do but i don't know i just I'm, i, I want to try that anyway so my point is like update your equipment you know you can't be using a freaking crane right now People got gimbals now, you know, like DJI got gimbals. You know what I'm saying? Ronin S, all this stuff, Zion Crane. Like now you can get smooth shots. Now you can get cinematic shots. You can go up and down. You can follow. You can track. You can do all those things with like gimbals and stuff. Like why are you still using a jib? Who uses a freaking jib? Like why are you using a crane now? Like you don't need a crane no more. You don't need dollies no more. Unless maybe you Quentin Tarantino, but like right now technology is on another level where now they're using more advanced equipment so you can't be using a dolly in this world you can't be using a helicopter in this world where like you got drones unless of course it's some your budget is on that level right but a lot of um filmmakers fail because they don't want to update their equipment they just want to stay with like sliders like Sometimes just use a gimbal or use something equivalent that's easier. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you're using a, what, what's that thing was called? Um, glide cam or whatever, the thing. But now people have, like, gimbals. Like, you don't need a glide cam now unless you just want to do it or unless, I don't know, but I don't think anybody now kind of uses a glide cam. I think the gimbals have taken over. You know, but hey, um, to each his own. If that's what you want to use, hey, don't listen to me. Do what pleases your heart. So if you still like glide cams, then do that. Anyway, so just like update your equipment as new equipment become available. Don't just stay with the old equipment that like came out like what? Like five years ago, 10 years ago. Update your equipment, you know, because like these people who update their equipment, they're going to be having better footage than you, uh, better looking quality cameras and everything. And then like, you know, they could they could tell this cop was like, oh, I just updated my cameras. And then if they ask you, oh, what's your camera arrangement? Because some couples have asked me that before. They're like, oh, what cameras do you use? What kind of equipment do you have? What lighting equipment do you have? They want to know all that stuff. Some some of them want to know all that. So if you start telling them, oh, I got a 60D, I got a Canon 60D, or I use a Canon T3i, like that would have been cool when it came out. But now... 
at least use a T6i or so, use something that just came out. Use an R5, even if it burns out, but at least it's, it just dropped, right? Anyway, so yeah. So number three is they don't utilize new forms of marketing. So a lot of wedding videographers fail because they don't utilize new forms of marketing. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is um, like now in this world of social media, you got Instagram, you got Facebook, which owns Instagram, of course. Mark Zuckerberg is always winning, right? Uh, you got Snapchat. Anyway, you have social media apps, right? You have uh, emails now. You have all these ways, YouTube. You have all these ways that you can reach potential clients, new ways that you can reach potential clients. Because, I mean, you want to go where the party is at, right? If you want to uh, reach more people, you got to go where the crowd is at. And where is the crowd now? The crowd is on these social medias. Everybody's on Facebook. Everybody got their Facebook. Everybody and their grandma, they got Facebook. So advertise on Facebook. Stop trying to go to the mall giving out flyers. Like, this is not 1988, bro. Like, why are you going out to the mall giving out flyers, putting freaking flyers in people's cars like you know what i mean like you can do that if you want to do that i mean you can do that but also what i'm just saying is utilize the new forms of marketing like facebook like online let me just say online utilize online google ads you know what i mean seo do those things you know it's going to add to your revenue i mean you know just don't stick to just don't be like oh i'm just going to do direct uh, email, whatever, direct marketing. I'm just going to do V packs. Like that shit is outdated, man. Like who, like, you know, who sits here like advertising in the newspaper? Like who reads the freaking newspaper now? I mean, some people do. I mean, my dad does, but he reads it off his phone, right? He just reads on the phone and he just reads what he wants. He doesn't like look at ads in the newspaper or whatever. Right. So, um, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, utilize the new forms of, um, you know, marketing. Adapt with the industry. Don't just stay there when the industry is here. You are still right here. Like, you got to meet the industry where it's at and sometimes even exceed above that, you know. So utilize new forms of marketing. And the reason why a lot of uh, wedding filmmakers fail is because they don't utilize the new forms of marketing that we have now with online. Okay, guys, number four, which is the last point. Number four, which is the last point is they undervalue their services. So the reason why a lot of wedding filmmakers fail is because they undervalue their services. Uh, this is one of the worst things that you could do as a creative is you know undervalue your services undervalue your creativityness undervalue your talent um because it's like cheating yourself you know i mean i understand when you're starting out to and you want to just get weddings and you want to just um have something on a on your portfolio to like show to clients but once you get in the game once you are a year deep once you're 10 weddings deep once you're 20 30 40 weddings deep like at least put your prices up man like look at your value like over like overvalue yourself you know like respect your time man you know because like you're going to be editing this thing and just like your your talent the the time that you put in to learn what you now know you know it's a lot that you put in you know it's a lot of time you sacrificed you know watching these videos here this is time that you're wasting right now but of course you're not wasting it because you're learning something unless if you're watching like PewDiePie then you're wasting your time but if you're watching people like me then you every time you watch my videos you get smarter right you get enlightened on some things that you didn't know you know so what I'm saying is like you know value your time and um don't undervalue your services guys like if you know you're worth uh getting paid uh two thousand dollars as a starting then set that as as a starting you know people who got that money they're gonna pay that and if you advertise right utilize the new forms of marketing right and you're gonna reach the right clients that will be able to pay you that kind of money and even in this pandemic people still got money man you know, people got a lot, like people got money. 
there's people that freaking are buying Lamborghinis every day in this pandemic. They got people got money. There are people that are, that are buying Benzes right now. You know, dealerships are open in my in my uh, neighborhood. You know, I was just I was just talking to some dude that sold me um uh my that sold my my wife a car in February. I was like, I met him in a store. I was in CVS. I was like, oh, how you doing, man? How's the business? He was like, oh, we're good. We're good. We're just down a few percent, but you know, we still we still making money. So people still got money. So don't undervalue yourself. Even when the economy is back up, some people still want to undervalue their shit. Like, oh no, just give me two hundred dollars. You got drones. You got freaking gimbals. You got freaking sliders. I mean, let's bring the slider back. You got my Frodo tripods. Well, let's bring my Frodo back. But let's say you got fluid head tripod. You got lighting. You got all these things. You got the A7S something, 3, 2, whatever. You got new equipment. And then you're going to charge $200? Really? Do you love yourself? Do you love your family? Do you love your kids? Do you love your parents? Do you love your wife? You want to give those people a good life. And if you undervalue yourself, you not just undervaluing you, you undervaluing your whole family. You're undervaluing all these people that can be benefiting from your talent right now. So don't undervalue your work guys okay um you know once you get a few weddings down and you let's say you got good equipment like you know start charging start at a thousand dollars you know start at twelve hundred dollars and wake and and have packages to where you even have a five thousand dollar package maybe even a ten thousand dollar package if you have to fly to la or to new york to go shoot somebody's wedding 10k for me like you want me over there give me that 15k i'll come over people got money out there they're living in apartments that they're, they're paying freaking eight thousand dollars a month for a, an apartment in new york and that's like what a two bedroom maybe even a one bedroom matter of fact so like you know people got money don't don't judge people based off of what you can afford. You know what I mean? I Just now. because you can afford a <laughs> uh, freaking um, a, a Kia doesn't mean there's nobody over here who can afford a Maserati. Maybe even 10 of them things. So, like, don't undervalue yourself. So that's the point. So, guys, that's the video. I don't want to keep rambling on. That's the video for the day. And hopefully you guys learned something. And uh, if you like the information... Make sure you subscribe to your boy and if you haven't yet. And also, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, guys. It just shows me that, okay, at least these people, you know, at least seven people here thumbed up this video or two people at least really like the video. So I'm going to drop something more like this. So thank you for watching, guys. It's your boy Francis, and I'll catch you in the next one next week.